the FBI in peace and war. The FBI in peace and war is brought to you by refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum every day, as millions do. The lively, long-lasting flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The pleasant chewing adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Another great story based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. Drama, thrills, action. Tonight's story, One in a Hundred. Good morning, madam. This is Barnett McGill, regional director of the Better Boys Foundation. Uh, just, just a second, please. I'm calling at the request of your mayor, who said I might count on you for a small contribution to the future of... Oh. No, sweetheart, I'm practicing a trapeze act. Oh, <laughs> Barney, you kill me. Uh, good morning, sir. This is Barnett McGill, regional director of the Better Boys Foundation. I'm calling at the direction of... Uh, what? No, I don't want the deep sea fish market. What's the matter, Barney? You dial wrong? Gloria, I have just called 55 names on a sucker list and have collected $4 and no cents. This is exactly $1.50 less than I paid for the list. You don't get mad at me, Barney. And what did you collect, my beautiful cabbage head? $100. What? Check for $100. From that guy I found? Mm-hmm. There it is. Paid the order of Better Boys Foundation $100. Gloria, you're wonderful. Well, what happened? Search me. He's an old guy, 60 maybe, lives in a great big house. Uh-huh. I walk in, I say, I'm Miss Patterson, Better Boys Foundation. He says, what am I doing for dinner tonight? And the next thing you know, he's writing out a check. Gloria, I can only what say... What about lunch? I'm hungry. Well, never mind lunch. Tell me more about this old guy, 60 maybe. What's to tell? Lives in a big house, probably a millionaire. Hey, what am I saying? <laughs> You're saying we're onto something big, sugar. The one sucker in a hundred that pays off. I am? You bet you are. Now, look, Laurie, start to, right at the beginning and tell me all about this guy. You don't want to eat first? Not yet, sweetheart. When you got one like this on the line, you got to start reeling in fast. Barney McGill was a charity swindler who worked his act with two props, a telephone to call the suckers and a pretty blonde to collect the money. McGill ranged all over the country with his racket averaging as high as $25,000 in a single year, most of the time from contributions under $5. But occasionally, Barney came across an unusually gullible sucker. And for this emergency, there was a special routine. And this is our regional director, Mr. McGill. A pleasure to meet you, sir. Miss Patterson has told me a great deal about your work with the Foundation. Well, I'm afraid I don't do very much, Mr. Wiggins. Oh, nonsense. That's all I've been hearing these last few days. You've got a very loyal co-worker, Mr. McGill. <laughs> I'm sure of that. Now, about this boy's cottage. Uh, Miss Patterson has been trying to explain it several times, but I'm afraid I... got I kind didn't... of mixed up, Mr. McGill, so I thought you ought to tell Mr. Wiggins. Oh, no, you weren't mixed up, Miss Patterson. Mm, no, yes, no. Yes, I was. <laughs> Mr. Wiggins insisted on me having a cocktail at dinner last night. You know, Mr. McGill. Uh, yes, I, I uh, know, Miss Patterson. Uh, Mr. Wiggins, the idea of the boys' cottage is quite simple. You see, we're building a summer camp for the boys on Beaver Lake, and we expect to have 20 cottages. Now, each cottage is to be named for one of the sponsors of our organization. And we'd like very much to have a Arthur P. Wiggins cottage. And, uh, well, that's all. You mean all you want is my... my Just name? permission to use your name, sir. But of course, I'd be honored, Mr. McGill. Is that what you were trying to tell me, Miss Patterson? Yes, that's it. By all means, sir. I'd like nothing more than Arthur P. Wiggins' cottage. <laughs> well, naturally, you want another slight financial contribution from me. Oh, not at all, Mr. Wiggins. You've given generously already. First your money, now your name. Oh, nevertheless, I should like to make a further contribution. And if Miss Patterson will honor an old man at lunch tomorrow... Of yeah. uh, course she will. Miss Patterson will love to have lunch. Splendid. Of, of course, I could give you the contribution now, but... Mr. Wiggins. I, uh, oh, oh, my nurse, I've got to take some horrible medicine. In just a moment, nurse, as soon as my friends go. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. McGill. My family insists on treating me like an invalid since I retired from active participation in the business. I have to humor them. <laughs> well, we're on our way, Mr. Wiggins. 
And if I may, I'd like to send you a form letter giving us permission to use your name on the cottage. Send it along, Mr. McGill. I'll be glad to sign it. Yes. Uh, do you think a contribution of a thousand dollars would be acceptable? Uh, more than acceptable, Mr. Wiggins. It would be extremely generous. Very well. And I'll see you tomorrow, Miss Patterson. I'll be here, Mr. Wiggins. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. McGill, and I appreciate the honor, sir. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. What a session. It's a good thing we got out of there. He would have given us the house. A thousand bucks? Frankly, I don't get it. I never had one bite like this before. We could go to California a thousand, Barney. California? Are you out of your mind? We're just starting with this guy. You mean we could get more than a thousand? Not we. You can. Didn't you see him giving you the eye? Oh, gee, Barney's at least 60. Well, who cares? Just as long as he's alive and can write his name in a checkbook. You watch, sugar. The Arthur P. Wiggins Cottage is only the beginning. Back to One in a Hundred in just a moment. Friends, one reason it's a good idea to keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy is that you can chew and enjoy this delicious treat while you're doing other things. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is swell to chew while you're working, for instance, and while you're driving your car or enjoying your favorite sports or hobbies. Now, you don't have to take time out. You can chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum even with both hands busy. The lively, long-lasting flavor is always refreshing. And the pleasant chewing makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Keep a package of Wrigley Spearmint Gum handy in your purse or pocket. Enjoy it every day, as millions do. And now, Act Two of tonight's story, One in a Hundred. There were many complaints on Barney McGill, and it was necessary for him to move fast to avoid arrest. In his haste, Barney would frequently ignore his female partners and be on his way. One such partner was Agnes Hiller, whom we picked up when one of McGill's victims recognized her. Agnes was a rather smart girl, more than a little burned up by McGill's abrupt departure. And believe me, I'd like to get my hands on this guy just as much as you would. When did you hear from McGill last, Miss Hiller? About six months ago. He wrote me a letter from someplace in Missouri. Do you still have the letter? No, I tore it up. I was so burned. What were you burned about, Miss Hiller? Why should I tell you? Was it because he left you without money? It was that, all right. But more. Another partner? Don't be such a wise guy. You weren't jealous, Miss Hiller. Jealous? Ha! Of that two-timing four-flusher? He's welcome to somebody like Gloria, believe me. Gloria? Who's Gloria? Never mind. Things will go easier if you cooperate with us. Who Gloria. cares what goes easier? You just catch Barney, that's all. Who is Gloria? Well, I guess she deserves it. Gloria's a girl that used to be in the chorus with me at this club before I met Barney, you see. She didn't do so good in the chorus on account of not knowing which was a left foot from a right foot, so she went back to Ohio. Go on. Well, after I met Barney and we were working the racket, I used to say... You know, honey, we ought to stop in Millburg, Ohio sometime and see this dumb friend of mine. She's a million laughs. Oh, I could kill that Barney. Go on, Miss Hiller. Well, anyway, in this letter Barney sent me six months ago, he said he looked up Gloria and I was right. She was lots of fun. A louse. Do you think this Gloria is working with McGill? Sure she is. She even sent me a postcard saying how cute he was. And you say her home is in Millburg, Ohio? Yeah. If you're going to look her up once, you must know where she lives. Yeah, I know. What does it get me if I tell you? When we checked on Agnes Hiller's story, we found it to be true. We then began tracing Gloria Patterson, whose career, to put it mildly, was somewhat erratic. Come in. Nurse, open the door, please. It may be Miss Patterson. Good morning, Father. Oh. Morning, nurse. Good morning, Mr. Wiggins. Well, hello, son, and what are you doing here? You're supposed to be downtown at work. I'm on my way. I just stopped in for a second. Well, good. I'm always glad to see you, just so long as you're not going to suggest that I move out of this comfortable house. I've given up on that, Father, but you're always welcome in our apartment. You know that. I know. But I've lived in this house for 45 years, and I sort of like it here. Yes, I know. Uh, Father, what I came to see you well, about... My nurse here has been very good to me. I'm sure she is. Father, you've been signing checks on the Baker Street Bank again. Well, I don't see why. Father, we closed out that account a year ago. 
I'm managing your affairs now. I pay the bills. If you want to buy something... I don't see any earthly reason why you closed out that account. Well, I don't want to go into that now. But please, Father, stop writing checks on a non-existent bank account. They only come back to embarrass me. I can manage my own affairs, son. I built up our business from a little notion store to an entire chain. Uh, Father, just... I'm late for the office. I... Remember about those checks, will you, please? I- I'm quite capable of taking care of my own finances, son. I know, Father. And, uh, Nurse, call me tonight the usual time, will you? Yes, sir, I will. Bye, Father. Goodbye, son. Can't manage my own affairs. Why, I built that business into a $2 million chain, single handed It's time for your medicine now, Mr. Wiggins. You're telling me not to sign checks. What do they think I am, incompetent? <laughs> We traced Gloria Patterson from her home in Millburg to Westville, Ohio, where she worked as a waitress in a diner. The owner of the diner described Barney McGill as a frequent patron before Gloria quit her job. The only lead he could give us was a postcard from Gloria saying she was having a wonderful time in Buffalo, New York. Gee, I love Buffalo, New York, Mr. Wiggins, more than any place. You do, Miss Patterson? I don't know what it is. It's just something about it. Hey, look at the meter. This is going to be an awful expensive taxi ride. Oh, that's all right. It does me good to get away from doctors and nurses once in a while. Would you like to ride out to the lake again? Oh, golly, no. i got to get back to the office. Mr. McGill needs me. Oh, well, that's too bad. We've got a lot of work to do, cleaning up the campaign. Oh. And, um, speaking of the campaign, Mr. Wiggins... Yes? Well, I was... Just wondering if there isn't something you kind of forgot today. Oh, is there? Mm-hmm. Something you should have brought with you. Well, what was that, Miss Patterson? Think hard. <laughs> My liver tablets. Oh, I knew it. I, I, I rarely come without them, but this morning I was in such I a rush. I didn't mean your liver tablets, Mr. Wiggins. I was thinking about the Better Boys Foundation and those poor kids in the city that don't ever see trees and flowers. Oh, that. Mm. Well, you know, Miss Patterson, I... I've been thinking that over very carefully in the last few days. You changed and, and your mind? I, well, I... You don't want the poor kids to smell the trees and flowers? Oh, dear me, no. That's not what I mean. I, I was thinking, well, well, I suppose this is sort of presumptuous, but if I gave a larger contribution, could you sort of have a, a group of cottages like the, the Arthur P. Wiggins group? How much larger? Uh, Five thousand. Well, I'd have to speak to Mr. McGill first. Well, of course, I'll give the 5000 anyway. But I thought that... Well, what's she stopping for? You told me you wanted to stop at the bank on the corner of Baker and Main. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The Baker Street Bank. Well, Miss Patterson, would you mind terribly waiting a moment? I just want to drop in here at the bank and pick up a check. No, you go right ahead, Mr. Wiggins. I asked my son to get me some checks, but he refused. They think I'll spend all my money foolishly. (laughs) Wait. Wait till they hear about the Arthur P. Wiggins group. That'll make them sit up and take notice. Back to one in a hundred in just a moment. Friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is made to give you real chewing enjoyment. It tastes mighty good, and it's smooth and satisfying to chew on. At the same time, chewing delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an aid to your popularity. Here's why. The lively flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint sweetens your breath, and the chewing action helps to keep your teeth clean, bright, and good-looking. So treat yourself to Wrigley's Spearmint Gum and enjoy it daily, as millions do. Get a few packages next time you're at the store. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Three of tonight's story, one in a hundred. The postcard that Gloria Patterson sent to the owner of the diner was traced to a stationery store in Buffalo. Knowing how McGill worked, we canvassed the office buildings in that area to see if there was any office space with a desk and a phone to rent. There was, and it had been rented by McGill, and he had left the place 24 hours before our arrival. You mean this guy was a crook and he was using my desk and my phone for swindling? That's right, Mr. Garner. And me only charging him $12.50 a week. I bet I could have got double that. You undoubtedly could have. Uh, Can we see the desk McGill worked from? Yeah, sure. It's down the hall there, suite 610. Can you imagine the nerve of that guy using my desk for something illegal and paying me a stinking $12.50? 
Mr. Garner, did McGill have anyone working with him? Yeah, I'll say he did. Dumb blonde, but really built. He, uh, well, that's his desk. I didn't have a chance to clean it out yet. You ought to see what some of those customers leave in the desk, you'd be surprised. Yeah, look, he's just like the rest. Papers all over the place. Do you mind if we go through these things, Mr. Garner? No, not at all. I always like to cooperate with the law. Maybe you could get a lead from all of this, huh? We hope to. Yeah, $12.50 I charge him. Yeah, tell me, this swindle he pulls, does he make money on it? About 25000 a year. 25000 How do you like that? And you only charged him twelve fifty. is Isn't that the truth? Steve. Yeah? Take a look at that. No, yeah, that's one of those lists he was using to call people. I used to come in sometimes to clean the place. And all the time he was on the phone with a list like that. Here's another one. Believe me, if I'd known what was going on around here, I would have put a stop to it. Huh, just goes to show you, doesn't it? Here I work my head off practically 14 hours a day. I skimp, I save. And the other guy gets the beautiful dumb blonde. It's the truth, all right. Mr. Garner, we'd like to take all of these lists downtown with us, if you don't mind. Oh, sure, go ahead. You can even take the bottle of aspirin. We'll leave that for you, Mr. Garner. Oh, thanks. Maybe I should take a couple. 25000 a year, beautiful girl, no work. <laughs> Some people have all the luck, believe me. Acting on the chance that McGill might still be in Buffalo, we started canvassing the names on his sucker lists. Not all of the people remembered McGill, but very few of them forgot Gloria Patterson. And I won't forget you either, Miss Patterson. Gee, Mr. Wiggins, I, I don't know what to say. I'm all choked up, kind of. You will write me from time to time. Sure I will. And I'll send you a picture of the kids playing around the Arthur P. Wiggins group. Nothing will make me happier, Miss Patterson. Me either. Of course, it costs lots of money to keep the kids playing around the Arthur P. Wiggins group. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. My, my check to the foundation. I was almost letting you go off without that, wasn't I? Almost. Well, my dear child, I, I have it right here for you. I wrote it out just before you came and put it with my medicine. Yes, here we are. Miss Patterson, may I present... You can call me che- Gloria if you like. Could I? Go ahead. Gloria, may I present to the Better Boys Foundation this check for $5,000, and my blessing goes with it. Gee, I feel like I'm going to ball, Mr. Wiggins. Would you like to call me Arthur? Yes, I would, Arthur. Thank you. Don't mention it. Here you are, my dear. Take the check. Arthur, I... I don't know if I ought to take it. Why, what do you mean? I... It's for those little boys, isn't it, Gloria? Well... I was a little boy once, you know, too. You were? Yes, my dear. Here, take it. I said the only thing I could say... Uh, nurse, I, I'm very busy. I, I know you are, sir, but Mr. McGill... Mr. Would... McGill would like a word in private with Mr. Wiggins, if you don't mind. Mr. McGill, what are you doing here? I'll tell you in just a second. Can we be alone, please? Mr. McGill! Shut up. Wiggins, you're a great big phonus balonus. Mr. McGill, don't talk like that. Mr. Wiggins just gave me a check for $5,000. Yeah, and he gave me a check for a hundred, which I tried to cash at the Baker Street Bank for our train ticket. And what do you suppose they told me at that bank, Mr. Oh, Wiggins? Mr. Patterson, will you pass me that spoon, please? I think I'm going to need some medicine. Mr. McGill... He's a phony, Gloria. He hasn't got an account at that bank. He hasn't had one in at least three years. Arthur! I used to keep a very large account there. Yeah, yeah, used to. You know, I ought to turn you over to the police, Wiggins, signing checks like that. Checks no good, Barney? He hasn't got a nickel to his name. To think I was ready to ball just a couple of minutes ago. Arthur, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Gloria, I, I assure you that you my sure intentions... you got a were... nickel, Barney? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Arthur? Mr. Wiggins, I've never been so insulted in my whole entire life. Let's get out of here, Barney. Okay, we're going. But you haven't heard the last of this yet, Wiggins. Why are we suing, Barney? We'll, we'll think of an angle. Don't worry. Oh, Gloria. Don't Gloria. you glory me, you swindler. That's too good for him. Mr. Wiggins, you're nothing but a crook. Come on, let's go. Nervous him trying to double-cross the foundation for better boys. How low can you get? You're not kidding. We ought to lock him up and throw the key away. All that time I wasted looking at Lake Erie. Yeah, well, there's a cab coming. A taxi! Where are we going? I left the bags at the station. Uh, oh, somebody's in it. Where will they pay the fare? Would you like this? Hey, Steve. Yeah? Look who's waiting for the cab. Well, what's the trouble, mister? Why, hello, McGill. Hello, Gloria. 
Do I know you, mister? Not yet, but you're going to. FBI, McGill, you're under arrest. Honey, what's going on? Barney, they can't do this to us. Can they? With scores of witnesses to testify against him, Barnett McGill entered a plea of guilty to numerous counts of fraud. He was sentenced to five years in prison. Miss Patterson, a first offender, was sent to a women's reformatory for a year, as was Agnes Hiller, McGill's other partner. McGill's chances of getting out at present are not even one in a hundred. Friends, when you want a tasty treat that satisfies you without being rich or filling, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Uh, There's lots of delicious, long-lasting flavor in a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Real taste enjoyment. And besides, you get enjoyment from the pleasant chewing. It gives you a nice little lift and helps tide you over till mealtime. Helps keep your mouth moist, your taste fresh, too. So do what millions do. Keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. And enjoy it every day. It tastes so good, lasts so long, and gives you real chewing enjoyment. In tonight's story, Elspeth Eric played the part of Gloria Patterson, and Edgar Staley was Arthur P. Wiggins. This radio dramatization for the FBI in Peace and War was written by Louis Pelletier. These programs are produced and directed by Betty Mandeville. All names and characters used on the program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This program is based on Frederick L. Collins' copyrighted book, The FBI in Peace and War. And the broadcast does not imply endorsement, authorization, or approval by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you real chewing enjoyment, invite you to listen to next Wednesday's story, The Smoke Ring, on the FBI in Peace and War. Same time, same station. Thank you.